All right, sorry about that. Technical difficulties. Uh, to continue on, on this next one, we're going to determine if the given points uh, form the vertices of a right triangle. Uh, if you label each one of these like as um, A, B, and C, and then just find the distance between A to B. And then we'll find the distance uh, from B to C. And then we'll find the distance from A to C. Whichever one gives us the largest a different uh, distance must be the um, hypotenuse. And so then we'll add the other two sides. Um, and as long as it... Um, basically equals uh, the hypotenuse squared, then we should be good. So basically what we're going to try to use is determine our A and our B, and the longest side will be the C, and then when we square everything, as long as everything equals, we should be good to go, and it will be a triangle. If this doesn't work out, this will not be a triangle. All right, so do A and B first. Remember the distance formula is the difference of the X values squared plus the difference of the y values uh, squared. Uh, don't really stress so much. I know this is going to sound weird, but if you do negative 6 minus 3, you get negative 9. And if you do 3 minus negative 6, you get positive 9. Both of those numbers will equal 81. Uh, so don't stress on the order of your x's and y's. Just take the difference of your x's, square them, plus take the difference of your y's and square them. So I know the formula was like y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared or vice versa. Um, it doesn't matter which x's you choose. Just find the difference of the twos. All right, so I'm just going to take the difference of my x values here. So I'm going to do negative 6 minus 3 squared plus Um, 2 minus 1 squared. And then we work that out. Again, that gives us negative 9 squared plus 1 squared. All right, so that just gives us 81 plus 1, which is just the square root of 82. Don't worry about simplifying it. Just leave it like that. And again, even if you had done 1 minus 2, you would have still got negative 1, which is still 1 uh, when it's squared. So you can see that it all works out. All right, so now we're just going to do... B and C next. And so now this is going to be the square root. Uh, let's see, our X values are B and C, so our 3 minus 1 squared plus uh, 1 minus negative 2 squared. 3 minus 1 is 2, so this gives us 2 squared. And then 2 negatives make a positive right here. So 1 plus 2 is 3. So this will be 3 squared, which will then be 4 plus uh, 9. which will then just be square root of 13. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing with A and C, which will be do, 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 negative 6 minus 1 squared plus... Uh, so our y values will then be 2 minus negative 2 
squared. So negative six minus one is this negative seven squared. Again, two negatives make a positive. Two plus two is four squared, which will then give you 49 plus 16, which is then just the square root. Let's see, that's 59. 65. Right, let's see, 59 plus 6. Yep, okay. So, what we're going to do is just looking at it, we can see that the square root of 82 is obviously the largest distance from all three points. So, this must be my hypotenuse. So, as long as the square root of 65 squared, and it, you don't have to worry about. Uh, which one you choose, if you choose this one or the 13 as your A or your B, because you're still just adding them. As long as this right here equals the square root of 82 squared, then we're all good. So let's do the math. Square root and a square will cancel on all of these. So really your question is, is 65 plus 13 equal to 82? Well, we can see that this right here makes 78 equal to 82, which is not true. So the question was, determine if the given points from the vertices, given points form the vertices of a right triangle, anything along these lines. They do not. All right. I don't know where that just went. There we go. Let's bring that back. Okay. So there you go. That's how you do it. If they would have equaled, then you say that they do. All right. The next objective is to be able to graph equations by plotting points. Uh, best way to go about doing that is simply just choose a uh, select amount of points. Um, I believe on your homework, it will give you some X values to plug in to find out the Y values. Uh, but you're simply just going to form a X and Y table. Just choose some points so you get a good idea. Uh, I always like to go from negative 2 to negative 1, 0, 1, 2. They like said on the homework you'll have more, they'll give you numbers to plug in. Uh, after that, you simply just plug it in. So this becomes, um, let's do this to kind of help you out with the math. Let's say this is our work, which is going to be just 1 over x. And then we'll write our result here as our answer. Is as best organized as I can for y'all. All right. So this is just one divided by negative two. Which is just simply negative one half. All right. This right here is one divided by negative one which is just negative one. This is one divided by zero, which is undefined. I'll just say UND. Uh, this is one divided by one, which gives us one. This is one divided by two, which is just one half. Can't really do much more with that. All right. After you get a good amount of points, let's see where we're we at. Then you're just going to plot them. So let's make a little coordinate grid um, on the test and on, on the homework. There will be a coordinate for you in which you just graph it. So we'll just kind of graph like here. A little small little graph. And this is just negative 2, comma, negative 1 half. So again, you'll go left 2, 
about halfway down, but a point. Negative 1, comma, negative 1. So I go left, 1, down, 1. This says 0 uh, undefined, so that means at 0, you will have an imaginary vertical line in which this graph will not cross. When you graph the other side, you get 1, comma, 1. Here's 1, comma, 1. And then we got another one that's 2, comma, a half. So 2, comma, a half. All right, so what you need to know about these guys, these guys, when it's like this, is called a reciprocal. A function. In which it makes a shape like this. There will actually also be like a little imaginary horizontal asymptote right there at zero. And so you just kind of have to know that that's kind of what this shape makes. As you graph them, wherever you get that zero for undefined, that will be um, where your vertical asymptote is. Easiest way to determine your vertical asymptote when doing these type of functions, I know I'm getting way ahead of myself in this topic, but just so you can see it algebraically. You just set the denominator equal to zero. So I see that it's just x equals zero. So that's how I know that's the vertical asymptote. To do the horizontal asymptote, if the denominator's exponent, so in this case is a one, is larger than the numerator's exponent, which in this case has no exponent because it has no letters, then the answer is automatically y equals zero. If they were the same, then uh, so like if you had a, a one like this where it was like 2x divided by x, then you would just simplify that fraction, which would delete the x's, and you would see your horizontal asymptote will be at 2. If the numerator's exponent is larger than the denominator's exponent, then there is no horizontal asymptote. So these are just some algebraic tools. Um, what they mainly want you to be able to do is to take some x values, plug it in, get the correct coordinates, and then get a good general idea of the graph. I'm just trying to give you a little cheat sheet on how to easily find um, what you need. All right. So that's one type that you'll deal with. Uh, let's look at another type you might have to deal with. Again, graphing the equations by plotting points. So again, we're having to do this without a graphing calculator. So again, you would want to do your x table, write your equation, which is y squared minus 1. Um, oh, no, my bad. Okay. Minus x plus 1 equals 0. And we'll write our y value. So again, I'm just going to choose some points. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. We're going to do the math, find our answers, and then plot our points. Oh, let's do a 2 at the bottom here. All right, so what happens here mathematically is, again, you're going to plug negative 2 in for x. So this becomes y squared minus negative 2. So that becomes a positive 2 plus 1 equals 0. Do a little math. We see that 2 plus 1 is 3. Subtract the 3, and then we get the square root of a negative 3. But remember, when we take the um, square root of something, we have a 
positive or negative. But notice here we get a square root that is a negative. Uh, we're not going to be graphing a imaginary, so this right here would actually be undefined. So we would want to do this again. So y squared plus 1 plus 1 equals 0. This will give me 2. I would subtract 2, be in the same situation. So I get a plus or minus negative 2, which would then be undefined. So do the same thing. We get y squared plus uh, 0 plus 1 equals 0. So right here we get 1. Subtract the 1. Again, I get plus or minus negative 1, which is undefined. So then we come over here and we do it again. So this becomes y squared plus, oh, maybe not plus anymore. This actually wasn't a plus. This should have been a minus. Doesn't change the answer. But this is minus 1 plus 1 equals 0. We see that negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So then we get y squared equals 0, take the square root of 0, and you actually just get 0. So we finally got a number. On your homework and test, you'll have numbers that actually work and not so many things that just get, keep giving you undefined. This is just my general um, stuff that I choose from, my five numbers. All right, so if we keep this going, this again, this gives you y squared minus 2 plus 1 equals 0. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Add the 1 over actually gives you a positive 1. So then you take the plus or minus square root of 1, which is actually 1. And you can keep doing as many numbers as you want. Uh, again, on the test and homework, they'll have selected values for you to choose from. I'm just going to choose a negative, uh, another one here real quick. And if you actually use 5, we can get another good number. This right here would just be y squared minus 5 plus 1 equals 0. So negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. Add the 4, take the square root. You actually do get plus or minus 2. Uh, so with that, we could probably form enough information to plot these points. One, two, one, two. Again, you'll be given a coordinate plane. Doing the best I got with what I have. All right, so all of these undefined, I could not use these at all. So I, str I skipped straight to one comma zero. So here's one comma zero, which will be located right there. Uh, and then at two, I actually have the values of one, and um, one and negative one. And then if you keep going, I got at five. So let me add some more there. So three, four, five. Extend that line a little bit. I got values at two and negative two. And so when we connect those dots, you can kind of get the idea that this graph, uh, I'm supposed to connect the dots, hard to see without a cursor. This, something roughly like that, your little programs would be a lot better to use. Uh, this is actually called a hyperbola. Hyperbola. 
and it's basically a sideways opening of a parabola. It just opens left or right. Uh, so that's what kind of shape this makes. You can kind of see that as you graph it and go through this process as well. All right, so that's how you can graph different type of uh, functions and stuff by just plotting points. Um, and there you go. All right, the last objective I want to talk about is identifying X and Y intercepts. Uh, so the problem we have here is one like this. Know that if you have a graph, the X intercept crosses the X axis. Um, and if you have a Y intercept, the, it's where it crosses the Y axis. Now, a couple things to note. When you have an X intercept, then we know that the Y value is always equal to zero. So if you have to find the X intercept algebraically, we can simply just plug in zero for Y and solve for our X. That's what we're going to do here. So we get X squared equals negative zero plus 16. Do a little math. That gives us 16 X squared. Get rid of a square. We're going to take the square root. And don't forget that golden rule of when you take the square root of something, do not forget the plus or minus, and the square root of 16 is 4. So your x-intercepts here are 4 and negative 4. I would accept that on a test. Uh, your uh, homework may want you to write these as coordinates. So you might want to write this as 4 comma 0 and negative 4 comma 0. Uh, like I said, I would accept this on the test. This might be what your homework and stuff might be looking for more. All right, let's do the y-intercept now. Same concept with the y-intercepts. Uh, if on the x-intercept we knew y was always equal to 0, on the y-intercept we always know that the x is equal to 0. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to plug in 0 for x this time. So this becomes 0 squared equals negative y plus 16. 0 squared we know is 0 equals negative y plus 16. We'll then subtract the 16 and we get negative 16 equals negative y. Divide by negative y we see that 16 is equal to y. Again I would totally accept that as an answer on the test. Uh, however your homework I believe might want you to write it more like this where it's 0 comma 16 like that. So notice the difference on x-intercepts the x value is written, y is 0, y intercepts, the x is 0, and the y is written. All right, so I believe that it concludes section 2. Sorry for all the technical difficulties um, on the writing. Um, hopefully I can get that fixed up for you all. All right, until next time, bye.